Ach, Ronan Agar, good morning to you. Hi, Adrian, how are you? How are you keeping? Great, you? Uh, flying out, yeah, yeah, yeah. An interesting week at this side of the water. I don't know if you've paid any attention to GA events, the club final last weekend. Yes, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Um, big drama, difficult one, really, because it's... Um, not there was two minutes left in the game, wasn't it? An, an extra man for two minutes. It was about. It was an extra man for it, and I'm slightly biased in the conversation because it's my club, uh, adopted club. But uh, the play, ball was in play for about less than 10, 10 seconds. Anyway, yeah, I think overall it was, it was a crucial move. Uh, it was a forty-five last last kick of the game, Ronan, and, and yeah, they had an extra man on the pitch, stood in the goal line, uh, free gets taken, squeezes wide. Nobody realizes all this is going on. Um, actually, apart from the opposition manager, who's asked the officials to do something about it. And they didn't. And then, obviously, the trophy gets presented. The homecoming happens. And now, suddenly, here we are, sort of five or six days later, waiting still for... Talking uh, about it. Still talking about it and potentially looking at a replay. A mess, I think, yeah. is the short story. Yeah. Yeah. Does it... Does it yeah. It, it's, if there's a hypothetical situation for you, Ronan, on that, say you win a Grand Slam, you end up realising afterwards you, you had 16 men on the ball for a, for a final line-out or some move, and the opposition say something after the match and appeal it, does it taint the win for you hypothetically, or do you care as a, as a winning team? Ah, there has to be something in your conscience, even if it's for ten seconds having sixteen men on the pitch. It's 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 an error in that regard, I think. But um, what you need is you need action straight away because if it they're made aware of it and in the aftermath, um, obviously when it's a final, it becomes extremely awkward because once there's uh, a prize giving ceremony <laughs> you can't really control the people emotion and said oh well hold on there's a potential uh, replay here because that's not how players think or or anyone thinks but I think if there's uh, you mean if it was for 10 or 15 minutes playing with, with an extra man there's obviously probably a, a very solid uh, chance of a replay taking place but for the last three of a game uh, it's it, it's probably put into the sector of a yellow card or a red card in the game and it's a decision that the referee made during the game and it's live and mistakes happen you sometimes have to um, swallow your pride take that and move on uh, but as you say when there's uncertainty the Friday after it it becomes a shambles yeah and we're, uh, it's an amateur game and you add all that sort of stuff into the mix as well but look at um, there's plenty of people I'm sure uh, watching this morning going Jesus will you move on and stop talking to Ronan about it so we'll do that um, we were chatting a few weeks ago about sort of um, you agreed I think that you were able to breathe, uh, breathe, literally breathe a bit easier I think when you were sat uh, well in the top 14 and sitting very well in the Heineken Cup now as well home tie um, in the knockouts confirmed does the environment around the place uh, reflect that? Like, is it calm? Is it settled? Everybody knows what they're doing and everybody in good form and in good shape? Um, or no? No, it's obviously uh, a lot of work in progress, Adrian. You know, I think um, every week has its own challenges. We've obviously performed well in Europe now it's back into top 14 and top 14 is very 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 competitive an away game this weekend and we're going to to Racing who are only three points behind us so um, there's so much at stake I suppose in all these league games that it feels like you're playing Europe every week but this is the our ninth game in a row um, so it's asking a lot of the squad, but that means that you can rotate the team and it creates a good environment and creates a lot of competition for places. And uh, we're missing our French internationals this weekend, but that's not a problem. It's it's something we're probably ready for and something that uh, boys are looking forward to because it gives other squad members a go. Like when you compare it to previous seasons, even last season, do you have a sense at this stage of the season, like, I mean, maybe a little bit more than halfway through, that you're on the right track, that you know, there aren't great tweaks needed that if we can keep going, keep everybody fit, that we're going to be there or thereabouts? Um, I think, strangely, as, a, as, as the coach, you don't really think in generalities. You probably have to be a little bit more specific in where you need your game to get better. As you say, yeah, happy with this, happy with that, but not happy with that. We need to get better with this. Uh, 
Uh, but it's constant tweaking, and that's probably on a daily basis. I don't think you can have a general view, obviously, or t- judged on your games. But unless there's a kind of a big outlier, you'd like to think that what you're doing Monday to Friday will transfer to the pitch on a Saturday. Sometimes it doesn't work like that, and you get, um, I suppose, a uh, left scratch in your head. But um, I suppose the last month has been pleasing in the fact that we have uh, consistency of results, which are wins, but not consistency of performance, which is a big difference. Is it tough, Ronan, when, you, when you've had a win like the Heineken Champions Cup last year and you're a winning team? Where you're probably at this stage now, this season, where you're like, geez, if we just if we just did everything the same as we did last year, we'll, we'll go on to win again. But the, the reality is you always have to be, as a coaching team and as a set of players, moving on, finding new ways of find a motivation and, and keeping the thing moving like you, you you have to keep adapting you do exactly and i suppose unlike in business the big difference in sport it moves quicker and you don't stay the same while in business you can stay the same in sport you can't you either get better or you get worse so there's times definitely where i felt we are we're getting worse but that would be i suppose the glass half empty in me then there's other times when you go okay as adrian said if we get uh this this and this combination on the pitch with potentially uh, this, I suppose, um, element of our game, right? I feel that we have uh, most definitely the tools to to hopefully go along in both competitions. Is it is it about, uh, on that, like, is it about tweaking your system and your plays and, as you said there, we need to do this better or that better? Or is it about sort of fitting pe- different pegs into different holes, given injuries or suspensions or whatever the case, or, or a little bit of both maybe? It's not even anything as complex as that. I think it's very much more basic. What What's happening, I suppose, in rugby you now is, uh, I mean, the workload of the forwards is completely different to the back. So you have, depending on uh, how you... Um, decide who finishes the game you could have 13 minimum or 14 forwards preparing for a game so essentially only two finish the game that start and in the top 14 you're allowed to make numerous changes so I suppose tactical changes are hugely important so uh, with 14, 13 players getting that I suppose organisation and uh, level of efficiency right uh, in Eight players is challenging enough, but in in 13, 14, it becomes um, very challenging. But uh, that's what I suppose what makes the job exciting, because depending on different combinations of how you set up in a lineup, whether you're going to launch your attack from a lineup or you, whether you prefer launching your attack from a phase game, it all depends on how we see the game and aligning that with your coaches, aligning that with your players, aligning that with the peop- the players who finished the game. Um, it sounds simple, yet the execution of it isn't that simple because, um, you know, I think how I set up teams is probably a skill set structure, a mindset. Skill setters are, from a coaching point of view, are okay. What does my head in is, is structure. Uh Errors, which would be people getting their role wrong because we haven't prepared them well enough, not they haven't per se prepared themselves. It's it's my responsibility, so that's something that um, I need to that I do keep an eye on. But um, we are not um, as fluid as we need to be. How go on, Jane. Sorry, just just I was fascinated to read um, Jerry Jerry Thorny's piece in the Irish Times this week. Ronan, where he's talking about the Champions Cup pool stages at the moment and how bloated they are and how, I think the way he described it was it's belated urgency and, and jeopardy and, and it kind of only becomes crucial towards the end of the pool stages. What's your take on the current setup and the current, um, I guess, system in, in the Champions Cup? Is it is it perfect? No, no, it's far. I think maybe because... We were so used to it at the start that it just became ingrained in us the the six pools of 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 four. But that that was um, you know what I mean uh, absolutely perfect in an Irish model in a French model that really doesn't work because um, you mean there's already twenty six league games in France. So if you want another six uh, games in Europe, you, that's whatever thirty two without the playoffs for the league, without the playoffs for Europe, without internationals, without the world championship, uh, which is proposed to come in. It, there's only a certain number of weeks in in the year, so something has has to give. 
where I think there's weakness in the current Champions Cup is the fact that, um, you mean, qualifying uh, for a team isn't the issue, while before it was very difficult to qualify to get top of your pool, which meant you go through no, as you say, uh, you know, I mean, if you finish eighth in your group, you come up against one in the other group, but uh, you're away and just the odds are harder, but you, you can still uh, pull it off while um, I, the other, the flip side, I suppose, is that where you look at Leinster, La Rochelle, Toulouse, is that they won their pool games and now um, their draw is more favourable because they have... Um, games at home which is obviously a big advantage mm. it's going back according to the Telegraph there was a report out mm. last night that it's going back to that model of uh, pools of four You're, that's obviously something you welcome uh, I don't see how that will get passed in France really yeah that, well sorry that was just a talk on uh, kind of on the street in terms of inquiring why why isn't that and mm. I think the the French presidents have uh, four free weeks, isn't it? But they don't have six free weeks. There's, that, there's capacity to get the European Cup in on, on four weekends, but not on six weekends. Is that just a blip, uh, Ronan? The French team's kind of struggling a little bit this year, obviously aside from yourselves and Toulouse, maybe. Like, there's no there's no underlying problem there. No, it's just very competitive, you know, and it depends on... Um, you know, I suppose the background to this would be uh, traditionally with the top 14 at around uh, 15, 16, 17, 80. The data suggests that a lot of squads are riddled with injuries and, and, and it is the case because you're competing week in, week out uh, and there's no there's no break. There's no periodization of the programming. It's, it's, it's all on. So some teams play... On the two fronts, other teams don't treat Europe as seriously as, uh, well, shall we say, an Irish or a Welsh or an English teams would. But I think when you come over and experience the 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 competitiveness of the top fourteen, you can understand that. Um, but you know what I mean the URC teams have performed well. Some French teams um, have. Um, probably not got what they would have wanted out of the Champions Cup and and um, like always there aren't any really hard luck stories Just to come back slightly to what we were chatting about earlier on about your work on the pitch are you, so you're 10 years into it now is it, am I right about that there thereabouts? Yeah um, What are you in a position now where particularly obviously given your role has changed over the last year and a half are you in a position now where you're doing more of the stuff that you like or like I was actually only thinking about it in the context of the Ian Coslo appointment of Munster as head of rugby direction uh, operations, and how that might sort of relieve a lot of um, potentially the work that Graham Rountree was doing. Maybe that he didn't uh, have so much grow for that it might be an opportunity for him to focus a bit more on the stuff that he likes doing. What's your balance at the minute? Yeah, very simply, I do what I like and what I want. Otherwise, I don't think I get the best out of myself. If I don't get the best out of myself, how can I get the best out of players? It's very simple might mm. sound like a an aggressive answer but it's not I think the most important thing is you do what you love you do what you enjoy I don't work as I say I I challenge my passion every day that's what I do it's frustrating at times it's hugely rewarding at other times but I think if you can't work out in your head what's important or what you're good at and what you're not good at forget about it what's your favourite bit of it? On the pitch. Yeah, right. You In your examiner column this morning, you're saying you've taken a bit of a step back from that. Sorry, just in the fact where I, on the pitch, I don't need to be the referee in the fact when you're refing kind of games. I don't need to ref that. I can get someone else or I can share doing that because when you're the referee, you're, you, you're focused solely on that job while mm. maybe it's better and maybe in six weeks' time, I could have a different opinion because, as Shane said, you have to continuously adapt. But you can see where the space is. You can see where you're making errors as opposed to being wound up in the player's mentality where they're contesting some decisions and you're you're trying to referee it as, as best you can. That's not my skill. What do you find gets your most create Like, as part of that, what is the bit that you, you're every week going right that the creative juice is going to get going here. This is what I'm really looking forward to. Um, 
I just, I suppose, um, ah, every day is very different because you're seeing, uh, you know, that's the difference, I suppose, being in a, in in camp and 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 judging on, for example, you seeing Ireland or Munster or Leinster for the eighty minutes at the weekend. When you're looking at the court, you see a different side to them completely on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Friday, and then the game might, may or may not match up at all to what they've shown during the week. And then as you add weeks and months on to that, then it becomes a kind of, I suppose, a fascinating experiment because in your head you're kind of going, well, this guy should be ahead of where he's actually is playing or performing at the minute. And then when you have that multiplied by 35, it's it's, it's uh, there's a lot of thinking time in that. Mm. Fascinated when you're talking about that, Ronan and the, the training ground, uh, etiquette and stuff. Like Frank Lampard getting the sack from, uh, from Everton this week. We were kind of having this conversation earlier in the week where one of the Everton players, I think it was Onana maybe, was, was pointing out that Frank Lampard was, was one of the best players in training. And, and he's the manager, he's retired maybe doesn't speak too well to the to the quality that Everton were showing in training but is is there that aspect to it as well do you find that there's a there's a competitive aspect to yourself even when you're in training when the when the ball makes its no. way in your direction no 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 I'm completely washed up it's over that I have just have to be careful from just uh just from um an injury point of view like some of the guys I wouldn't want uh you know what I mean Batia the Fijian 7 12 uh, running into me because he could do untold damage and there aren't many like him thankfully still playing the game from well from people that play against us but um, you have to be on your toes because that guy you know he doesn't really like uh, running towards the sideline he he runs north south <laughs> to get out of his way <laughs> because whether you're the referee or not <laughs> I don't think he has that factored into his head when he's carrying the ball so um, yeah, you have to have a little bit of evasive skills, but I can tell you that has most definitely slowed down. The reactions are, oh no. Do you, well, do you ever throw the tee down in training? Like, is it like riding a bike, no, or is it no. completely different? Uh, as it, as no, in, like, do you have to keep practicing to be at that level, or is it you could pick up a tee and still kick to a to a certain percentage close to where you were? Oh no, it's it's. Unbelievably cold. I'm stiff. Bending down would be a would be a success at this stage. Shane, are you joking me? Not a chance. I could. No, no, no. Shane it's, has no appreciation for the, the the man in his mid forties running. A bit more, exactly. A bit more sympathy for you. you know? Yeah, no sympathy. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the I was very uh, sorry. Surprise is not right, but uh, it's interesting to see your comments in the Examiner again this morning, just about your passion for that uh, that barbarian strike. Fifty years old. An incredible work and how it um, inspired you in some ways. Is that overstating it? No, it's exactly it. That's your your first memories are usually the ones that stay with you, and that's uh, you can see it perfectly, so vividly, like it's yesterday, you know. And these are all the guys that that made you dream and made you trace your own uh, dream. And um, yeah, I can picture that image absolutely. Uh, Perfectly, the, yeah. Barbarians rugby is is very, very important, especially the way the game is gone. I think that week we had in in London this year playing the the All Black Fifteen was um, was such a a special week and such a, um, a refreshing week and um, a very enriching week. The uh, the commentary of that clip alone is uh, just outstanding. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is, and there's obviously um, there are new uh, voices coming on that are marking the sport. But I think, as you can say, from um, over the years, uh, the commentary of 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 certain tries are, are the one that are etched in your brain. Cliff Morgan, well, he wasn't even supposed to be on the commentary. Bill McLaren got sick a couple of oh. hours beforehand, and he got wheeled in. Love that. Woof. I mean, not as if Bill McLaren was any slouch himself, no. but geez, what a commentary! Yeah. <laughs> it was we uh, we were having a conversation on the show today Ronan you might have no answers for this whatsoever um, but uh, it's a slot we've we've kind of invented up your your dinner party your hypothetical dinner party we've had this discussion with different sports people before of of sports people who are alive and well not necessarily still playing but they can be retired from any sport golf, tennis, boxing, rugby, football 
snooker and darts I know as well as a couple Oof. of options like if there were three sports men or women who you could um, I suppose you have to be conscious of the dyna- dynamic at the dinner table as well here but it's a conversation we're going to be having later in the show so curious to get your thoughts I know I'm putting you on the spot here how many can I have? three Right, typical me. I'll go Roy, Barry McGuigan, Sonia, Johnny Sexton, Ronnie O'Sullivan, uh, myself, Paul O'Connell, um, Ruby Walsh, and um, Henry Shefflin. Tell you Joe what. Canning. Oh, ten. that is. Um, see, the thing is, like, we're having this hypothetical, hypothetical conversation around it, like, we know it'll never happen. You could actually, that could end up happening. Do you know what, though? <laughs> you, you mightn't be great at maths, Ronan, but you, you'll, you're definitely good at organising a, a dinner party. <laughs> I, mean, that's, well, that's, I think it's 10 there, but, but it's, it's a good dinner it, party. It's a little bit like the, um, the commentary, as you said. Um, Bill McLaren wasn't meant to do with Cliff Morgan, <laughs> nipped in. It's the same, always, as you know, the same as going to the darts or the snooker. It's the, it's the, uh, the parties that aren't planned are the best ones. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like the one we'll have in December at the darts, 100%. <laughs> uh, that's a good part. That's a good dinner party there, lads. Party, Jesus. Yeah. You've, landed, you've put down the gauntlet to the rest of us. Robert, thanks, William. We'd have to, um, we'd have to have it in, in, uh, in, in Paul O'Connell's host though, because he has that big new table in the dining room <laughs> is this I've, I haven't seen this yet is this on social media is it or oh no 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 I'm just actually making this up on the spot <laughs> sorry you've put proper right, thought yeah. into this you've got a venue sorted you know, as well he's got, the thing is now he's going to get asked about this at the next Ireland press conference <laughs> this will be the main topic in 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 uh, where does he go Liscanner is it I think down in the depths of Clare somewhere no, it'd be good though, wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be a fly in the wall. There. Roger and Ronnie yeah. in the corner having chats right. about a- snooker. After we do the uh, the van to the darts in the summertime, that'll be the, the next road show after that. <laughs> good man. Thanks, um, Ronan. All right, chat you later. Cheers. 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 Bye.